Um, you know, you're looking right here. The line has uh, Memphis Grizzlies one and a half point favorites in the last hour or so. Just about everybody who is a Grizzly was been announced out of this game. John Morant is doubtful. We know Desmond Bain is going to be out. John Contra looks like he's going to be out as well tonight. Um, Zaire Williams is going to be out tonight, um, as well as Jaron Jackson Jr. It leaves the Memphis Grizzlies with a very, very short lineup overall. The line is flipped. The Heat are right around four, four and a half point favorites here. Um, Ski, you were able to get in early here. You've got uh, Heat plus one and a half in your pocket, under 224 in your pocket. Um, you know, looking at how the numbers adjusted, how do you feel now knowing what the injury report looks like? Well, obviously, I'm happy to beat the um, beat the current lines on the numbers. So, I feel like I did my job, and um, that's all we can ask for. To just see, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Reasons why I picked this game, um, it's a couple of trends that I'll start with. For one, everybody knows I'm big on rest advantage. You have a Heat team with two days rest versus a Memphis team on a back-to-back, and these are things you, you know, should be thinking about a day ahead of time because – you probably think some of these guys are going to sit out for the Memphis side. And that's why you go in and grab the number early. So teams with two plus days rest versus an unrested opponent uh, since the beginning of last season, I have them as 68 and 44 against the spread. That is a little bit above 60%. And then for the under, we're just really looking at, um, we're, oh, my bad. I'm messing up on the under. It, it, I would, I'll say this. At the current number and with the injury report, I would not go with the um, go with the under anymore just because I feel like it's moved too much. I honestly played it at 226 and a half and to see it all the way down almost 10 points. I just think it's moved too much and it's not good practice um, to bet the ass into the line like that. And I apologize if I was not supposed to say that. But (laughs) one way or the other, if I had to pick, it would be it would be the heat. But I just, in good faith, can't tell you to bet it at minus four. All I can do is tell you the number that I got, which was plus one and a half. Yeah, it's always a good spot to be in. Do you have any thoughts about middling? Are you anybody that does that? Again, you've got almost 10 points of value on the total, about five points on the spread, I think. No, I'm not a big middler. Um, I just, you know, I do my work early. I've been up this morning since 1 a.m. my time. So I, I bet these games extremely early, and then I just, you know, forget about it. Let the chips fall where they may. Makes perfect sense. Now, Chris, not an official play for you on the show, but it sounds like you got Miami last night as well. What do you think about the game now? And again, what are you going to do with that nice Miami ticket? Any interest in maybe taking a little bit of the other side, open up that five-point middle? No, I'm kind of this game, same as Ski in that sense, you know, unless there's like such a wide disparity where it almost necessitates that you take a middle, I typically don't. But I, I just kind of want to remind the audience, you know, the Miami Heat at full strength. We saw them the other night. Now, of course, it's, it's really tough to beat a team two straight times, but they did beat the Celtics in, in their second straight game that they played Boston. That game went into overtime, held them to 48 points in the second half, six points in overtime, and you started the show talking about how historic that offense is, Alex, and that's what the Miami Heat can do at full health. You know, People just really, really underrate the Miami Heat year after year, season after season, season it seems. But I think they just have a unique identity just for how tough and how well they can play on defense. So i just like to comment on that. You know, the Miami Heat, when they're at full strength and when they're motivated, still a pretty darn good team, right? Uh, even though I think a lot of people, you know, they just like to sell, sell Miami. They just constantly remind us that they're still in it. So maybe a team that I'm going to look to bet on if they continue to stay healthy as well, because when they are, they're a pretty good team. But it's the only way that I could look tonight. In fact, I might even want to double down on Miami, you know, even though we saw a big switch here, um, looks like everybody important is going to play for the Heat. Yeah, and to Jimmy Butler's in, I think you're right. This minus four should probably be closer to six, so maybe it's still a little value, but kudos to everybody that was up late last night, or in Ski's case, very early this morning, doing their homework and getting the best of the early line. Again, Ski does have Miami plus one and a half and under 224 in his pocket, but at market numbers, we lean towards the heat. No real official plays again at um, four and a half or 218 and a half, which is where it is right now. 